Detroit. You tube. I love it. The final 53 man roster. We got it and is here today. I'm so glad the speculation is over. The games is over. Um, people was just making videos about trading meaningless players for this, that, and the third. But we got it, man. We have got it. It came as some shocking news. There was some shocking news with it. You know, there was some people that, that was cut that, that it hurt the fan base. And everybody was acting fake sad and stuff. And honestly, man, I am actually here for real news real things that are happening and talking about trades that won't happen that's not for me talking about players that won't even make the team that's not for me i remember a couple years back uh everybody was tripping out that that, that tom kennedy didn't make the team like like come on now <laughs> he was the first one cut this host <laughs> he was the first one cut Without further ado, we can get into some of these surprises and this 53-man roster. I just want to start off by saying that like, having like two quarterbacks to start the start the season, that is a that's just like hey, got one. We paid a guy that's injured. We got a young guy that's injured, and you know got Aiden Martinez, Adrian Martinez on the practice squad. We're set. But the big surprise was cutting Craig Reynolds. Cut, Craig, cutting Craig Reynolds was like a huge surprise for me. And that was probably like, that showed me like the Lions really want to get better. Cutting Jamar Jefferson was needed as well. I mean, when you look at the dudes that made it to the practice squad, you see what they want. With Maurice Alexander, with Dylan Drummond, they want guys that are explosive that they can bring up. I mean, Dan Campbell even said in a press conference, that it's not a 53-man roster. It's the 69-man roster that he cares about the most. His practice squad, squad guys need to be able to play and contribute immediately. So signing like a guy like, you know, the running back Knight, like signing this dude shows me he wants a dude that can come in and play and get some touches. I mean, you look at the highlights, you look at what he's done. He was way better than Craig Reynolds. If Craig Reynolds was worth a sneeze, he would have started for real. He would have been given every opportunity as a as a Washington Redskin when the Redskin was around. Like when I watched this dude night run, Z Z Z Z Zanova, Zavana, this dude night, man. We're just going to call him Bam Knight, okay? This dude can hit the hole and he's explosive. And he compliments every running back in this room well. Because he can split back, he can break tackles, and he can keep moving. And that's what I really like in a running back. You know, last year we had some explosive running backs like Swift and Craig. But this year we have guys that can actually use their explosiveness and break tackles. Like, look at this stuff. Like, guys are moving forward. Like, I feel like our running back room has been upgraded completely. Like, I like Jamar Jefferson and everything, but he wasn't the guy. I liked, you know, that talker, that dude crying and stuff. He wasn't the guy. I need explosive running backs that can break tackles, that can take something back for a touchdown, that can make a break a run, see a hole, one cut and go. And signing Bam, just off his situation with the, with the loaded Jets team in the backfield, you're actually getting a quality player that can come in and play games. Like he had 300 yards. He has season action. He can he can improve what we have. So if we have someone go down, he's actually a benefit. I don't think Craig had that little burst. He he Craig didn't have that burst or that break tackle ability of this guy. You just wanted Craig to have that burst in that five yard run. This dude can make 15 yard runs. So I feel very confident in what we're doing and how we're going about it and getting these bums out the way. Now, I'm not going to call them bums to be disrespectful. I'm just saying, like, they're not adequate players to the level that we have, like, to the level that we've created. You know, they're getting left behind, for real, in talent division-wise, yes. Now, there are some notable guys that I didn't want to lead his team, like uh, Coda, uh, especially. I liked Coda. Um, I think they're trying to work out something with him. I don't know if he got picked up off waiver. Starling Thomas, and you know, there were some cuts that needed to be made that haven't been made. Like Will, 
like Will Harris. I got to say it, but you see who they kept. You see who they kept and you analyze it. They DNs that they kept are heavy and they can play multiple positions. The DNs are heavy because they can come in as defensive tackles as well. Kaminsky and and, 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 and Pascal. And you have to keep like seven guys there. And their linebackers are the same. They kept six linebackers. It's the same. So where they kept their depth was like all multiple moving parts. Even the cornerbacks. They got corners on this team that can play safety. They got safeties on this team that can play corner. Like everyone they kept for real is honestly, with the exception of Will Harris, and even though this speaks to his versatility, he's still a bad player in my mind. Like they want dudes on defense that are versatile. And then if you're not versatile, you at least uh, can contribute. So they went heavy defensive end. I know there were some people talking about trading um trading my man 41. That was stupidest. That was the stupidest thing in the world. If anybody was talking to you on YouTube telling you to trade 41 and get some trade value, they're an idiot. <laughs> they're an idiot, man. This dude was by far the best pass rusher down the stretch. I mean, Aiden Hutchinson is good, but this dude has some type of secret sauce with his pass rush ability. That's why I scouted him, remember, in the HBCUs two years ago? That's why we did that. So it kind of got me down that, you know, the Starling Thomases of the world didn't make it, but they were claimed off waivers. And, you know, I know people were rooting for him and all this other nonsense. Like, honestly, the weakest part of this team is starting to be the backup offensive line. Okay, everything is kind of built up. Like defensive wise, is built up. It wasn't. It wasn't like this two years ago. It wasn't like this three years ago. You know, now where you were built up is lacking. You know, the most notable person I see that's a backup. You know, is Source Doll. I feel I can trust Source Doll as a backup. Uh, I can trust uh, Glasgow as a backup. But there's some dudes that fall off, like with their eight offensive linemen. You know, it's gonna be five guys at the line, and you tell them you got three coming off the bench, but they all versatile. You know what I'm saying? So that's what happens when you go heavy in some areas and you go light in in others. Uh, I'm guessing they tr trust Ragnow and Vala, uh, Hulaputi Vitae and all these guys to be there when they need them. But it's gonna be. <laughs> If they get thin, it, uh, if they get thin inside, it's gonna be a hard season. But all in all, like I feel like this team is very good. Like it's rounded out. I think that the next draft we need to really look at backup offensive linemen. Like for real, I think Source Doll is a nice little swing tackle piece, but I really think he's truly a guard, and we need to look at you know strong offensive linemen. Uh, to take the places of guys that like like Ragnow, you know, Ragnow's battling an injury and he's just, you know, he's playing through pain and Halaputi Vitae is also injured and he's going to play through pain and not be available as steadfast as everybody else. And then you got to sign your other left guard. So you got to make him a highest paid left guard in the league. So you have a lot of change there at that position that used to be our focal point. It's still not it's not bad, but you see that you see the light at the tunnel. But, you know, um, as far as Marvin Jones and wide receiver core, I think when you don't have Jamison Williams in a wide receiver core that on paper, they look like trash. Um, when well, you got Craig Reynolds, Marvin Jones and uh, my Ross St. Brown, like. Amon Raja go to receiver no matter what. But I think the combination of Amon Ra and Laporta is going to make this receiving core around him better. So it doesn't matter who your number two is at that point. As long as you got Amon Ra as a staple of that team, as Jameson or Laporta, like a distraction, you're gonna be good. Your number two is gonna get he's gonna try to get a ball. He's gonna try to get open, but it's not gonna be as valuable. I look at this roster, I look at also people that got to get paid. Like, there's going to be a lot of people got to get paid next year. So I'm looking at it, but I'm so glad they kept seven defensive ends. I'm so glad they kept six linebackers. I'm so glad they went heavy with the secondary as well, and everybody's versatile. So they won with me. 
Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think and not what you're doing. Love y'all.